Well, thanks for continuing to watch this episode of Answering the Call. So excited to be in Casper, Wyoming, visiting Vision Beyond Borders. With me, the founder and executive director, Pat Klein. Pat, you know, there's a real call to reach the unreached at this point. Talk yeah. about that. How is Vision Beyond Borders doing that? Well, one country we've been going to for many years, carrying a lot of Bibles in there, but we've been targeting unreached villages. Uh, we started working about 10 years ago, going to these remote villages. Uh, we started with 55 villages, ended up going to 68. Wow. Uh, of those villages, there was no churches, no Christians. Today, about 20 of them have churches. Wow. And so they said, could you come and help us? We're working with 1,100 villages now. And in the last uh, about, about 15, 16 months, we've been to almost 500 villages. And so wow. we're trying to target 1,100 villages altogether. And we're just going to other countries and saying, let's, let's reach people for Jesus. You know, we pass out tracts. We give them the MP3 players with the gospel on them. Right. Uh, whatever it takes, you know, the, even the Jesus film, we use that as, as well a lot. Yeah, lots of different languages. Yeah, yep. we have the tools and the technology to reach and to give them the resources so even after we're gone, they can, they can go deeper, right? Right, right. Yeah. And then we follow it up with Bibles, and we give them Bibles, and we want to help establish the church, get the church grounded in the Word of God, and equip so they can go out and do the work and keep the gospel going. Right. When people give to this ministry, do they earmark dollars for a particular country or a people group or just for Bibles or those MP3 players or maybe to sponsor a missionary who's trying to get out in the field? Um, they can actually sponsor whatever they want to sponsor. If they earmark it for like Bibles, it's used directly for that project that they earmark it for. Mm -hmm. uh, it's restricted funds, we have to use it that way. But we're constantly buying more and more Bibles. What we try to do is get the best possible price. Yeah. You know, in some places they've said, could you put a plastic cover on it? Because sometimes they have to bury it because the communists come to their villages and they have to put a plastic bag in the ground for up to three weeks. Wow. So they said a uh, paperback or hardcover Bible's not going to last long, so right. plastic cover. Uh, in some places in China, they said don't write Holy Bible on the binding because right. when they have it on the shelf, sometimes when the communists come, they don't see they don't see a book that says Holy Bible on it, and it, they overlook it. But and they so, don't know what New Testament means, right? Right, right. So we are working in uh, in a country in, in uh, Southeast Asia, actually up in the Himalayas, and our friend was taking Bibles into the prison. And he was actually stopped, and they said, oh, you can't bring Bibles in here. And he said, well, these are, these are New Testaments. And they said, okay, New Testaments are fine, just no Bible. <laughs> and it's not, not to get hung up on semantics, but that worked for us in this case. It's, it's just amazing. And this guy goes everywhere, and he's planting yeah. churches and getting the gospel out. He's planted 27 churches. He's got Bible studies going in 13 prisons. And this guy's unstoppable. Yeah. He's yeah. just an amazing guy that loves the Lord. Uh, I was asking one time, he said, we went to a, a remote village, and they, they traveled for six days by, mm -hmm. by bus and by car, and then walked two days up into the village to bring the gospel to a village that never heard the name of Jesus. Yeah. And he said they led a Buddhist couple to Christ, 84-year-old couple to the Lord. Wow. And I, he said, uh, we could have flown, but it was too expensive. And he said, we, we don't stay in five-star hotels, we stay in all-star hotels. Yeah. We sleep under the stars. <laughs> That's pretty good. You've been doing this for over 30 years. So I'm sure you got more stories than our viewers got time to hear. Yeah, tons but, of um, stories. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's really somebody who raised their hand and says, here I am, Lord, send Amen. me. And uh, I would even say, you know, you're giving the word and the Bible to people in other countries. There's some folks here in the country that still haven't read our own book, and we have it. Right. They haven't, you know, what's your word of encouragement to get our folks back into reading the Bible. You know, there's so much wonderful truth. The, the Bible is all true, but there's such incredible, it gives you life. It really, you know, every time I open my Bible, I'm reminded it's not about me because society says it's all about me. Mm -hmm. But when I open the Bible, I realize it's not about me. It's all about God and his eternal plan and his purposes. And it's, it gets my eyes off myself and which is, it's freeing. It's yeah. freeing when I got my eyes on Jesus and I encourage people to read the Bible. Read the Bible on a daily basis yeah. and hide God's word in your heart because it will change you. Yeah, amen to that. That's a good word. Stay tuned when you get some more interviews. I want to encourage you to read your Bible too and see what God has shown you to do and maybe partner with a ministry like Vision Beyond Borders. Keep watching. Mm -hmm.